ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are calling from. I just want to uh, invite you this morning, uh, this time as well. It's another time of episode of the update. I want to let you know that this is the only time that we come together and we learn different, you know, from different people and uh, what they have been doing, what they have done, and what they are still planning to do. And just for the sake of update, and for you to be updated, you know that anything that comes to, you know, that, that comes into your life, you need to get to a particular level whereby you you see yourself changing, modifying. And you know, uh, uh, redirecting what you have been what what you have been doing before, and get it done in a better way. Most most importantly, during this time, we can see that things are not as usual as we used to do it before. Since the time of uh, pandemic, we we we've been seeing a lot of changes, a lot of modifications, and a lot of uh, things going on around the world. Not the same way we used to do it before, because Things are not in the same way any long, any, anymore. And in this time of pandemic, what do we do? What, get, what do you need to get done? How do you get yourself together? What are the things that you have, not, you have left undone that you need to go back and revisit and, and check and, and see how I can do it better? Or what are the things that you think you cannot do but suddenly you discover that you see, you, start, you see yourself doing them this time because you rediscovered yourself. And what are the things that you are already doing that you need to improve on? And that's the reason for the update. And why we are here, we are here to educate ourselves, encourage ourselves, and launch ourselves out for a better things that is out there for us. In the light of this, I just want to you know, I'm glad to introduce to you this morning a, a, a man of God, a leader, you know, not just being a leader, you know, by age alone, he's a, uh, he's a professional leader, leadership uh, uh, conference speaker as well. And uh, he, 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 he has so much idea. Not only that, he also, he, he, he's also a PK. You know, you know, when you say, you know, America, they call them PK in Af other, you know, word, they call them a different kind of name. You know, that's pastor's children, you know, or, or pastor's child. You, you, you know, I am glad to introduce to you this morning uh, a friend, a brother, you know, and when I'm talking about brother, just, just a brother, a older brother, you know, uh, some of you might look at, look at me and uh, I'm still younger than him. Don't, don't, don't let this, you know, uh, if you see, just you will see, you will see that you will see that he's younger than me. But but I can tell you, he's my brother, Pastor Joseph Ibukun Aderebide. Good morning, sir. Good good morning, but good afternoon from Scotland. Yeah. All right. <laughs> in yeah. fact, it is good evening. A good good evening in Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, I just, well, for, for the sake of people that are watching all over the world and uh, from different, pa different places, uh, different, different, uh, places, I just want to uh, say to them that, you know, uh, we are privileged to have you uh, here on, the, on this platform today. And uh, I, I believe um, your, your, you, you, you will bless, your life will bless everybody. And uh, I just want to say thank you so much for coming out of your Thank you. Room. Thank you for inviting me. I am so excited to have you. It's been a very, very long time, you know, <laughs> connection. But at the same time, uh, this kind of internet system uh, brought all of us together. I am glad. I am glad. I am glad to have you around. So Praise God. <laughs> yeah. So uh, can, you see, can you just introduce yourself to the world? Okay. Uh, my name is uh, Ibukun Joseph Aderibigbe. Uh, I'm known by different names to different people, depending on where we met. For those we met in the university, they call me Joseph. For those who knew me from, uh, from the grassroots, they know me as Ibukun. 
but uh, in, in, in the United Kingdom, where I am in Scotland, people know me more as Joseph. And um, that should be it, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, it, it, it's, it's nice. It's, it's nice because uh, I, you know, a lot of people, you know, uh, uh, kind of, I get people meet me, uh, met you at different, different points, at different places, and uh, uh, you know, some in school, some in you know, ministry, some, you know, uh, that knows you either from, you know, when you are young, and uh, with that, I, I, I can say, you know. Uh, with that, uh, that God, God, has, God, has, God has blessed you. Now, uh, Pastor Ibukun, I, I just want to, uh, I want to ask you, you know, uh, what's your life, what's your, what, what's your life look like? You know, starting from your, you know, you, your, your childhood to all to this moment. <laughs> How, how's your life look like? Ah, uh, it's been, it's been God all the way. Uh, I was born in Bute Meta, uh, shortly before uh, Redeem had our own maternity. And uh, I grew up in the Bute Meta. In fact, uh, as a child, I lived at that number one, a cemetery street. I lived in that compound, that church compound. That's, that was where I was born into. And I grew up, I think we let that place when I was about five or six, but we've always lived in Ibutemeta. I grew up there. Uh, growing up, my dad, being a missionary, I had to follow him everywhere. So some of the mission field that my dad was going, I usually follow him. And being the firstborn, of course, you know, uh, anywhere he goes, he grabs me. I remember I was telling my children the other day, every time dad is going for, uh, for service, he will leave everybody at home, but I will have to go with him. So sometimes 5 a.m., I will be sleepwalking and he will be dragging me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That was, <laughs> that was how we, you know, we grew up. And then um, I went to Salvation Army Primary School in the Butemeta, and then I went to Burel Avenue High School in uh, Sabo Yaba, and then I went to Lagos State University in Ojo, uh, in Lagos State, and then I also served in Lagos, and then I uh, started working. I worked in the airline industry. I worked in the banking industry, and uh, up until, 2001, before I resigned and started my own business, because at that time, uh, I felt the call of God to go into full time in some way. So I resigned, started my own company, and then I was doing mission. And then eventually, in 2006, I found myself in Scotland where in, I started a parish of RCCG in Scotland by divine direction. And uh, we're not in the uh, urban city, we're more, uh, it's an equivalent of, uh, we would say in a rural, if we're comparing it to Africa, it's more of a rural, semi-rural area, even though yes, it's a town, so, but, and the Lord has been helping us since 2006. So, wow. uh, well, that, 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 that's a quite a, lo a journey. <laughs> that's a quite a journey. I can tell you, you know, because uh, looking at what what your what everything looked like, people want to know, uh, uh, you know, how, you know, you know, with 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 all the people that are that are watching, you know. It, it, it did not just come around where, where you are all of a sudden. Some, some people say, ah, well, you know, this man must be born with a uh, silver spoon in his mouth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but unfortunately, the, the, the way you, you said it, it, I can say definitely there is no silver spoon uh, anywhere 
you know, silver might come right now. You might be eating with silver right now or golden spoon right now. But that does not mean that was what you came with. You, 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 you walked into it. You walked yourself into it. Let's talk about your ministry. When did you come about the ministry issue? How did you, how did it, how's the ministry been for you? Yeah. <clears throat> I've been in, uh, I've been in ministry even before I got born again. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, why did I say that? <laughs> like I told you, uh, when I was born, I grew up in the church. And uh, even, uh, even though at that time, my dad was a pastor, my mom was a pastor, but, you know, everything we were doing, you know, was in the church. And uh, drama ministry, uh, choir, anything that is doable in the house of God, yeah. you know, I was doing, even before I gave my life to Jesus, you know, uh, like somebody said, officially. <laughs> yeah. And um, it was during my teen years that I actually gave my life to Jesus. And uh, uh, ministry started, like I said, you know, properly from there. And um, I was into teens ministry. You know, I was part of those who started the teens ministry at the headquarters. And uh, from there, uh, from the headquarters, we were transferred to uh, Ikeja in King's Court. And uh, we continued with the teens ministry. And uh, I was in that teens ministry until I left Nigeria. And uh, when I left Nigeria, I was in South Africa for a short period before I then moved to the UK. When I moved to the UK, uh they there was somebody God told about uh the ministry I was doing. You know, he told me he said you you what God really wants you to do, you are running away from it. Mm. I said, really, I'm not running away, but uh I just you know in my own mind I want to just be finan financing, I just want to be a financier. To the ministry i don't you know i'm involved in the ministry but i want to to be able to finance the ministry instead of you know being in the ministry itself but uh in 2006 all of that changed i yielded you know to the call finally i bought my my bridge i used to have a, a company that i run uh from south africa to every part of the world with a branch in Nigeria as well. And um, when I came to the UK, I had to give it up because God asked me to give it up that he would take care of me. So I went into full-time ministry without salary and that was what I was doing until now. Wow. So I had to give up my business. That's why I said I had to burn my bridge or you know, I give up, give up the business and then face the ministry squarely. Mm. But if you have to say if, if you to to burn that bridge like that, you know, being a pastor's child, and uh, for you to get into the ministry, to, to have your own ministry, leave your work, leave your business, leave what you have been doing before, and uh, start the ministry. How how easy? Was it for you? <laughs> you know, because I, 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 you and I can testify. I, I, we can say, you know, how the ministry used to be, even mm. with, with, with fathers back in those days. Mm. When we look at the, the, the way, because from what you just said, and right now, and I can, and I can pick from that. You know, no, you don't want to be part of the ministry. You just want to help people that are in the ministry. I would rather work from the background, you know, be uh, from the back, uh, be a supporter than being at the front for, for, uh, forefront. Same thing, and that's the same thing you just said. You don't want to be at the forefront. You just want to be, you know, supportive team. Okay, I, you know, whatever they need, I, I will be there. But in spite of this, I, I always tell people, I don't know what, our, our parents, I don't know their commitment with the Lord 
and what they are, what they are, what they, what they have sacrificed us onto. <laughs> You know, when you, when you when somebody make commitment on your behalf, and you do, with no matter how much you run, you're still gonna come back to that same spot mm. because God has a purpose. God has a purpose, and mm. so how has that been for you in giving up your work, your your what you are passionate about? Because you are passionate mm-hmm. about that business before you get into that business, and yeah. start a ministry that you are that you are running away from. You see, when we were growing up, uh, we used to say, "I would never be a pastor, yes. never." Yes, and uh, I'm sure I'm not the only one that, that have said this. I'm sure you must have said it at oh, some point. Of course, yes, many of us have said it, and uh, one of the reasons why we said this. Is because we saw the sacrifices that our parents were giving into the ministry and how so little physically we were seeing in, re- in terms of return. So we we'll rather want to, we we'll rather pray that God will bless us so that we can improve the lives of our parents rather than join them in giving the same sacrifice. And so that, that, that was what it, it, it was. You know, uh, they, 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 was, they struggled, especially when it comes to ministry in Africa or in Nigeria, where, you know, the, the experience I, I have. You know, uh, secondly, my parents were not learned. And uh, I remember my parents, dad and mom used to say, all the book that I did not read, we want you to read. You and all your siblings, we want every one of you to be educated. And you know, they, they will do everything possible, even if they have to fast. I remember my mom fasted for a whole year, a whole year from January to December. Hey. You know, number one in praying, in making sure we have all that is needed, for us. So that's so much a sacrifice wow. our parents gave for us. So you know, when you look at all of that, you know, do you want to, in your mind, you're saying, no, I don't want to go through that. <laughs> yeah. You know, we, we thought everything was going to be in the physical. But thank God, it was when I was in the university that I started having the revelation of the kind of sacrifice and reward that they were getting. Before then, I was looking at it from the physical point of view, but growing up gradually, I started realizing that, oh, no wonder the Bible says, let your affection be on things unseen, on things that are eternal. You know, but when we were younger, we were looking from the perspective of the physical. Oh, how many cars? Do they have? Did they have their own house? How rich were they? We never knew that they were richer than what money could buy. So in growing up, we learned all of that. So when I finished university, I remember uh, while I was in the university, I had the call. I knew I had the call. I went to one of my mentors. You had him, uh, I think, two weeks ago, Pastor. I went to him, I said, Daddy, I am feeling this strong urge to go into ministry. However, I don't know what to do. And I remember very well, Pastor Daemi told me, he said, Son, yes, there is a call. When there is a call, there is a timing. Mm. Mm. Finish your uni. When you finish your uni, he knows the plan for you. He asked me a question. He said, right now, right now, you know you have a call, but can you tell me in specific words what God is asking you to do? I could not answer the question. He said, you see, there's a timing for it. Wait for it. And he gave me a word of prophecy that day. He said, the things that God wants you to do is going to be beyond the sure 
of Nigeria. Mm. I didn't believe. I, I, just, I said amen. You know that kind of amen that uh, uh, I will say you say so. <laughs> Not knowing that the same prophecy had come to my parents mm. when I was born. Mom told me all of this later on, you know, as I was growing. Then I told mom, I said, ah, Pastor Deyemi also prophesied that, but I didn't believe him. And mom told me all the prophecy on the, because I was born when a crusade was going on at Ebutemeta. Hmm. And when the announcement was made, a word went out. I was a baby, I didn't know anything, but my mom, she told me a little bit about it, but as I was growing, she started revealing more and more to me. So, so I took my mentor's uh, advice at that time. I finished my uni. I served the Lord with all of my heart, especially during the time we were serving. Oh, I did everything in my capacity, you know, for the Lord. And uh, when, during the time we were serving, one of the brothers that we served together, he came to me, he said, he felt that God was telling him that I can go and do whatever I need to do, but you will end up in full-time ministry. I also laughed at that one too. <laughs> yeah. I said, me? No way. I'm going to be in IT. I'm going to do, I will make lots of money and then I will help all those in mission. That was my plan. That was my vision. And I said, maybe that was what the prophecy was trying to see or to say. So uh, when I started working, uh, I was, eventually I became a banker. I was in the bank, rapid promotion. You know, it was at the peak of my career as a banker, as the head of IT of a bank, that God said, it's time. I told my wife, I said, God said, it's time. She said, well, God has always been telling you things. And there's nothing God has told you that he has not Damn. made to happen. Mm -hmm. So I said, but I'm afraid. She encouraged me. She said, whatsoever the Lord is asking you to do, don't be afraid. I said, I'm afraid because if I stop this, who will feed you? Who will feed the children? Mm -hmm. I already had my two children at that time. She said, remember, you are the one that told me that any time God asks you to do something, he will back you up. Remember, Pastor Adeboye, your dad that was, you know, that has always been sacrificing. So she encouraged me. We went on a three days fasting together just to be sure that it was the time. Because I remember Pastor Adeboye said, when the time comes, you will know. So, and uh, maybe I should say, at that time, I knew, I, you know, you know that knowing that the time has come. I remember discussing with, discussing with my managing director, you know, they were offering me, they said, no, is it the money? I said, no, it's not the money. You know, is what exactly stay on? You know, no. I said, I know. In fact, some people even thought maybe religion was getting into my head. I said, this is not nothing to do with religion. I knew that I knew that it was time for me to move. I left the banking and started this business as directed by the Lord. The business was booming. Guess what? Within one year that I left banking, there was a tsunami in bank. That was the time we had the banking problem. Or almost every bank banks were merging. You know, people, many people lost their job. I even have some friends that lost their job at that time. You know, they, they asked me, they said, did you know there was going to be this problem in the banking industry? I said, I didn't know. God just said it was time for me to move. So I looking back now, I want to say thank you, Lord, because it took me out at that time when he wanted me. To go out. And therefore, you know, just like you're saying, yes, we do want to go into full time, but whatever the Lord has said concerning you, the only 
There are only two people that can change it yourself if you don't want to live in the center of God's will. Mm, mm, mm. And of course, the devil can also convince you not to take the call. So I thank God that God, by God's grace, it kept me. And uh, the, the ministry fully started when we now got to Scotland. And when, I, when, I, when we started the church, I, I still wanted to be doing some business. But God said, no, face this squarely, and I will support you. You know, it was very difficult. Very, I must tell you, very difficult. You know, you've been in serious financial breakthrough, and all of a sudden, everything dried up. You know, you left everything, and then you started this. And where I am, it's, like I said, it's not in the main city. It's a small, more or less like a semi-rural area. And uh, when we started the church, it was only uh, a few of us, uh, about 12 of us, yes, about 12 of us. And then it grew to the extent that we had only myself and two, myself and my family and two other members. That was how much it grew. <laughs> so we're about six wow. in, the, in the church. And then from six, it grew to seven, eight, then it will go back to six, eight, go back to six. But all of that time, the Lord said, keep doing what I send you to do. I was doing evangelism. I was doing ministry beyond normal church. So I was reaching out to people because we don't have many people like myself in the area. So I was making friends, you know, networking, getting to know more people, getting to know, you know, the real, helping other ministry to grow, to develop. And, you know, I was doing all of this and boom, within, by, by, the, by the time we were celebrating our seventh year, God took us to a new level. Hmm. He provided a building. We bought a building. God sent helper. You know, when we bought the building, before we bought the building, God told us he was going to give us a building. I thought it was my personal house. I said, God, but I already, you already gave me a house. Why will I need a building again? But God said, for the work of ministry. We were only four adults and two children. Wow. We grew to uh, six adults and four children, mm. making 10 of us. So as at the time we were buying, buying the building, another thing God said was, we were not going to take mortgage. We're going to pay it outrightly. Wow. How can six people, wow. six adults, four children, pay for a whole building? Anyway, to cut the long story short, we got the building. God made it in such a way that we paid for it outrightly. As at the time we were buying the building, we were six adults, four children that moved into a building that can sit over 800 people. Wow. Wow. And since then, God has been adding to us. God has been adding. You know, the ministry has been in, uh, increasing, enlarging. You know, we, we even started another uh, parish and uh, reaching out to more people. We do more outside the church than in the church. Mm -hmm. And that is what, that, that's why I said it's only God that will have done that. So if I would say, if I would say, you know, because there is something that I, I know every, that, that kind of yeah, um, almost always scare everybody away from that mini, from being, a mini, being in the ministry. And from the look of things, when you look at it, as long as we are dealing with or we are dwelling on the, the, the experience of the parent, what the parent went through, what the, parent, what, what the experience in their own time, and forgetting that what Bible says with Joshua 
and uh, Moses, God said, even though I promised you I will be with you as I was with Moses. Now, it, to me, I see it as, uh, as a metaphoric word to Joshua. Because it, was, it wasn't the exact way that God was with, Josh, with Moses that he went with Joshua. Very true. I, it, it, it was like almost opposite of everything. Joshua doesn't have to call, uh, confront Pharaoh. Mm -mm. Joshua doesn't have to use a rod that Moses used. You know, but he promised, as I was with Moses, with the mindset that, oh, okay, he was with Moses, you know, being a leader, being, Moses, Moses went on the, uh, on Oreb to, to get all those kind of uh, uh, laws and everything. Joshua doesn't have to do all those things because Moses paved a way already. He just, can't, he went in, in, in another dimension that completely beyond that of Moses. And that's same thing with all the, all the pastor's children out there that are still afraid of, you know, of the call of God upon their life. God will promise you that he will be with you. No matter what he has used your father for or your parents for, your own way, the way he wants to use you will be different from the way he has used them, you know. So he wants to make sure that everything that he is doing with them is going to be, is going to be, uh, 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 it's going to be in another dimension, in an, at, at another level. Now, look at what 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 you what you are ex, what you experienced, you know, and how God took you away from you know where you were before, from your job, from everything, and placed you directly on every other thing that you know that, that you know in in uh, uh, on the field that just only six people or ten people can buy. A big place, you know. It's it's so amazing, it, and, and that's just one thing. Now, with that, and you know, how has they been, you know, rolling, pulling the ministry together in in a new land, in a place, you know, you know, go, you know, in in this kind of uh, 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 place like this. And, and I know you. Let's talk about leadership. Let's talk about leadership. Mm -hmm. How has that been? You know, because I, I remember, you know, uh, you 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 get you get in, in to, uh, also involved with the leadership, uh, um, motivational speakers uh, uh, speaking at different uh, 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 events as well. So, how has that been? How does it take? Uh, what does it take to be an effective leader, uh, uh, a kind of leader that you know, that 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 stands out in ministry? Hmm. Uh, from the time uh, we were young, you know, you never know that uh, you are a leader, but in the real sense of it, you are. And uh, it's only that the, the skill just needed to be built on. I remember, you know, as a young, uh, a uh, man, the young boy, you know, having a mentor, looking at mentors like Pastor Deshola at that time, Pastor Deyemi. In fact, Pastor Deshola and Pastor Deyemi, they were two people that I know God really used for me. Because I look at them, in fact, apart from Pastor, of course, Pastor Adeboye, uh, uh, my dad will even tell you, I went to school to read mathematics just because Pastor, of Pastor Adeboye. <laughs> because I love, and every time he's preaching, and you know, I used to say, wow, if it takes mathematics to know how to preach that way, I'm also going to read mathematics. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> you know, he's just, uh, oh, he's a mentor of mentor. And you, you know, sometimes you want to preach like them. You want to talk like them. You want to, and another, another person I used to listen to, you know, when I was young was Pastor Kumui. Pastor Kumui, Pastor Adeboye, Pastor uh, Fosho Deshola, uh, Pastor Deyemi. As Pastor Deyemi and Pastor uh, Deshola, they were, you know, I, I, I remember there was one 
sermon I preached when I was in the university. It was copy to copy of what Pastor Deyemi preached. And I wanted to do exactly the way, you know, following them. I would ask them, sir, you know, this is what I want to talk about. How do I say it? And they would give me guidance. So I, but I never knew it was preparing me for the future. Mm. I never knew. So uh, I've always all, also wanted to improve. You know, I've joined, joined some organizations and then uh, uh, just last year, stroke this year, I've been wanting to join the John Maxwell leadership team, you know, to, to learn more. I've been following John Maxwell from when I was in, in the university. I've never met him one-on-one, -on -one, but I, I just fell in love with his uh, leadership Bible. I read that Bible. Uh, in fact, I think I bought more than four or five of that. I, I would buy it. A friend would say, can I read it? They will never return it. I'll buy another one. It got to a time that I had to buy two in case somebody collects one from me. So I was even expecting that somebody will get somebody, it. Somebody will. <laughs> and of course it happened. <laughs> so I've all, till now, I've always had John Maxwell from the time I was in the university. So I, I always read it and I said one day I want to you know, go to his leadership conference and all of that. And every time I go, maybe I'm invited to speak. You know, these are some of the things that uh, God used to fashion me. Because the truth of the master, matter is uh, everything stops at the desk of a leader. And to be a leader is not, you know, you can lead from the front, but you don't have to be in the front. Mm. That's the mistake many people, people think, oh, being the leader, you know, you have to be, you know, at the forefront. You can lead, but you don't, not, you are in front, but not really in front. I remember I was in a parish back in Nigeria, you know, we were starting different parishes. It was later that one of the pastors came to me and said, I didn't know you were the one responsible for most of these parishes. You don't have to know. You don't have to know. But many people want to be seen, want their name to be printed, want their... So, God has been building me up in that respect. And of course, uh, I still have a long way to go. And that's why I joined the John Maxwell, you know, for more... Uh, uh, for more insight listening to john i can listen to john maxwell for two days sometimes my wife will tell me have you not had enough of this man i said ah no no i've not from the website you will read and read and listen to you know some of the his insight and you just want to know more you just want to read more and you, you feel the holy spirit telling you there is more there is more there is more. Hmm. So there's no end to that learning. Our prayer is just that, you know, whatever we learn, God will help us to implement it, to do it. Because the first thing is the life of a leader. Doing what you have said. And that's why Daddy, Daddy Gio, Daddy Adeboye, it's, uh, if you ask me to pick one person, apart from Jesus, uh, that you really, really follow, I will pick that the devil is. I, all the things he's been teaching us since when I was young, that we, 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 everything, I see it in a different light, even from what John Maxwell, every, every time John Maxwell is talking, I say, ah, the daddy already told us this. How come we, you know, it's not like this? If you understand what I mean, mm -hmm. the way John Maxwell will put it down, I say, ah, Daddy said this in year two thousand, in nineteen ninety something. That is ah, and look at, it's like you are listening to a new, uh, a new doctrine, which is old. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that is why, honestly, 
I, my prayer is that the Lord will continue to, you know, increase Daddy Adeboye. God will continue to increase him. You know, so many things that that man have sowed into our life. If you have ever, ever listened to any of his sermons, especially in those old days, in the 80s, when I was very young, in the, uh, in the 90s, you know, all, if you can go back to some of your notes, if you were taking notes, mm -hmm. and some of the things I'm learning in John Maxwell, I brought out some of my old notes. I, it's like, I've known this thing before. I've heard this thing before, even though in a new way. But that man was, God was using him to teach us things, to build us up without us knowing. It is now that we are appreciating him. More and more. More, more and more. More and more. Now, mm. that, with that, uh, you know, when you see, when, uh, you talk, when you are talking about being a leader, a leader mm. that, that people will see and they will, they, they will follow, people, the leader that mm. people will, you know, because the, the, the church of this day, it, it has come to a place where I, we, we believe the church should be done this way. Bible, Bible, you know, Bible says something about uh, in in a, in, a, in a time like this, a time will come. People will develop skills from the, for themselves. They will mm -hmm. develop ideas for themselves. They will develop things. They want to hear what they would, that, what the, what that will suit them. What that will that will make them feel comfortable. We make them feel good. I, I, and Bible he says something about that. It says it, 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 it that will trickle their ears. That will trickle. Mm -hmm. their ears. That when when someone trickles you, 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 it makes you feel, oh, I, I, I'm okay with this. You know, that there, there's a kind of new normal that, that mm. comes around your life that you just develop immediately. That oh, that's just the whole way. That's the old style. That's the old teaching. That's the old ministry. That's the old this one. But this is the new. This is the new new life. Newfound love. Newfound life that I just find for myself. And you just, mm. it trickles your ears, it trickles your life. It makes you feel like, oh, this is the new comfortable thing that we need to hear. And when, you know, we you know, make people live the, 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 the way of God, mm. you know, with time. And we just, we just, just keep deviating. But there are some teachings that, that we, that that, 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 are all, that will always remain, as the Bible says, the foundation of the Lord always mm -hmm. remain. Stand there, sure. Stand, always stand, sure. You know, with the new generation that we are in, we find ourselves right now. With the new life that we find ourselves right now, what will be your word to the, to, to, to the, to the people out there? How do we get ourselves how can we still hold on to our faith? How can we hold on to our faith? Even in this midst of situation, new life that we find ourselves. Thank you for that uh, question. Uh, number one, we remember the Bible says in the book of Proverbs that we should not remove the landmark. Lament. And uh, what is the landmark? The word of God. Jesus said, you are my disciple. If you not only hear my word, but you are doers of my word. And that is why uh, listening to messages that tickle your ear is, is, is one thing. But you yourself, you want to be like the people of Berea who were wise. Paul called them wise. Why? Every time Paul finished preaching, they would take their notes. When they get home, they would check it. Oh, this one, uh, this one is philosophy. Paul, you can hold on to that philosophy. This one is of Christ. We will hold on to this Christ. So until for, for this, our generation, Going back to the word of God, having the revelation of the word of God is what will count, is what will differentiate 
people from people. Jesus said something. He said, by their fruits, we shall know them. And that's a, another core character, character of a leader. By their fruits. We know some... I'm sorry, I'm going back again to Nadia Deboe. From the time I grew to know him, all his preaching has been about holiness. Even when daddy is preaching about prosperity, he will tell you, prosperity without holiness is hellfire. No matter what you want, holiness must be won. And then when you look at his life, you will see the, the fruit of holiness. You will see humility. You will see, you know, everything. I remember, you know, let me just share this. Uh, when daddy was coming to, to dedicate our church uh, in, here in Scotland, uh, majority of our, of our congregants are Scottish people. And, you know, the way we think as an African man is different from the way, you know, thank God for bringing me to this side of the world. Because you know, when I'm in Nigeria, the way I think is different from the way we have to think here. And I remember I spoke to the protocol person. I said, please, I want you to reduce the protocol around daddy. He said, no, no, why, why? I said, let me assure you, nobody is going to shoot daddy. Nobody is going to harm daddy. Please reduce the protocol. Let it just be, you know, let it be normal. Let it be free. Why am I saying this? Number one, many people have been looking at us and they've been saying we are worshipping man. All the white people around us, oh, it's, uh, it's, it's the worship of man. Now, if daddy comes here and we have all protocols surrounding him, like the president, what do you think they will say? They will say, oh, have we not said it? So I pleaded with him. We were in that meeting until 1 a.m. I was pleading with him. I said, no, please reduce. I just want it to be, let it flow naturally. Uh, he said, people will want to touch him. I said, let me tell you the truth. White man, don't do that. It is we Africans that do that. Eventually he agreed. Daddy came. There was no touching. There was, in fact, some, uh, some of uh, my, my members, they saw Daddy, they greeted him, hi, Adeboye, hi, how are you? You know, everything went smoothly. When Daddy left, some of the reports I got was, what a humble man. Somebody told me, she came to me, she said, from what I've seen, on YouTube, how people, you know, the bodyguard and all of that. He said, she said she was waiting for it, you know, in our place. And then she said when she saw that the that the Adeboye, from that day, they started calling him that the Adeboye with me. So you can see, we can see it from his life. We can see, you know, what is the fruit. So as a leader, what is the fruit that people are seeing? What is the fruit that people will see? And that, that is the key that is missing today. Everybody wants to be popular, want to be revered. Everybody wants, but are you, is that what Jesus said? I learned something from Jesus. Let me just say this as well. I don't know how the revelation came. If you read the Bible very well, when they were about to ad arrest Jesus, mm -hmm. how come they needed somebody to identify him? Mm -hmm. Have you thought of it? Mm -hmm. How come they needed somebody to identify him? It means one or two things. It means Jesus was dressing as they were dressing. He was eating as they were eating. He was doing everything together to the extent that the only time they will know is Jesus is when he's teaching. And people will say, oh, that's the teacher. 
But after that time, they can't recognize him among them. They needed somebody to betray. When that word came to me, I said, wow. So all these leaders that are going about and, you know, for example, if I want to know the general of a of a church, it's easy to know by the number of protocols that follows him. Leadership. The way Jesus led. That is the way we, you know, and these are some of the things that is making unbelievers, even some so-called believers, think twice that what is happening. This is, you know, because remember the Bible says at the latter day, knowledge will increase. Knowledge is increasing. It has increased. Mm -hmm. And people are thinking. People are using their head. So when it comes to all these kind of things, we need to, I want to be like Jesus. Let me end by saying, there was a young Sunday school girl She went back home one day and told her parents, Mommy, I saw Jesus. And they were like, maybe she was seeing a vision. And then when she would not keep quiet about it, they said, okay, tell us the description of, the, of Jesus. Guess what happened? One of the Sunday school teachers helped her to lace her shoe. Anytime she had a problem, this Sunday school teacher would make sure, you know, everything... When they were even asking her, they thought it was the pastor. Finally, when it, she pointed the person, it was one of the Sunday school teachers who was helping and being like Jesus to her. She mm. saw Jesus in her. Mm. Mm. That, as far as I'm concerned, that is leadership. Say, leadership. The Lord will help us. All the things that we hear, to be able to implement them, to be able to, to, to do as Christ will do. There, there, are, there are some people that are out probably listening or that will watch later and they're kind of wondering, this kind of pandemic thing that is going on around the world, you know, I, I, because that's where I got the update from, mm. you know, we all have an idea of what the year is going to look like. Mm. There are a lot of prophecies. There are a lot of prayer that I've done ahead, fasting that, I've, that, 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 that even that you know, both before the end of the year to the beginning of the year, with everything all round up together in what 2020 will be, here, and the vision what 2020 is going to look like. We all have all those things already received but I, I i i discovered nobody ever thought we would be like this in 2020. nobody ever thought okay things will suddenly change that everybody will be locked down hmm. nobody ever believed we will get to a situation whereby we won't be able to hold service in the church here and for some people that are, are holding services we won't be able to even hold a single service in the church. Hmm. Nobody ever thought the business would close down and everybody would be at home. Some never, some never believe they will, they will be out of job. Neither did government even say, you know, believe, you know, uh, that, that we shut down in, in government too as well. Do you know that even there are some government, there are some countries that are fighting with one another? The moment coronavirus mm. struck, everybody disappeared and started minding their own business. No more war. Let's leave war for now. There is there's another internal war that's actually waging war against every one of us right now. Let's so let us deal with that war for, for now. So let us, you know, external war and start dealing with the internal war. And and I kept wondering, what, why all this? And that's what I got that, that word. We need to get ourselves updated. Mm. We've, 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 we've been on a particular journey or at a spot 
or we've run doctrine for too long, hmm. it's time for us to diversify and begin to do things in a new, in a new way. In a new way. Before you become, uh, before you uh, uh, became your, 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 a pastor of a church, you remember the time you were preaching to yourself, right? You remember there was time you were preaching to maybe one or two people, and God expanded you, and you become you. you, you that's why you, 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 you know, uh, He has brought you this far. But at some point in time, God wants to, you know, He wants to change you, for you to be able to reach out to other people. He wants to take you to a, a level whereby you will see in, in front of your computer like this, and we'll be talking, mm. and you'll be talking to people. You don't know how many people that are watching all over the world. You don't know how many people that, 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 that will watch your, that your video or, or, you know, in a one, one day and they will be blessed with your word because they don't have to see you, but they just have to hear the word. Yeah. But if we have to wait until you travel to those areas before those people are saved, it might not work that way. Mm. So God used our technology to get us Meanwhile, you might not even have the idea of, I, I want to get into this thing before, but the only way to condition you to this level is by locking you down and suddenly you start <laughs> discovering yourself. Oh, I can still do, let me, let, let me, let me start doing something in a different way. Mm. Either you will, you will be on, online these days, you will not see anybody doing one program or the other. That's true. Everybody find a new love. Everybody find a new idea. Everybody find one thing that we don't used to do before. Now, I want you to just, in a few minutes, I just want to talk to, to, to people that are still out there. You know, how, 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 you, how it was for you when the first time the church closed down, what you experienced, how did you survive it? And what are, you, what are the things that you are doing right now that you, 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 you don't used to do before? that came as a result of the pandemic. Yeah. Just to encourage you. Thank God. The Bible says in all things we should give thanks. The pandemic uh, actually, like you said, really revealed who we are truly. Before the pandemic, uh, as a parish and as a uh, person, we were reaching out to so many many people and uh immediately the church were, were asked to close down of course uh we are a communal people we love that community and that is going to be taken away from us but guess what it also gave us the opportunity to reach many people that were before now unreachable mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of the things we started to do was that we had partnership with some companies they give us food we buy you know some with our money and then we started going from house to house neighbors church members we started giving out things to them. I remember somebody, you know, uh, told me that since this thing locked down, you have fed my family. I said, with what? These little things that I, but that little thing that you're giving to somebody goes a long way to show kindness. I've received cards, I've received phone calls, uh, flowers, chocolate, People saying thank you because you don't have to do what you do, but you do. You, you've been doing it anyway. We bought well, potatoes. In the process of trying to buy potato, you know, a farmer in our area said, "No, pastor, don't buy it. every potato you need to give us. I will supply it." Mm. The farmers gave the potato, gave uh, carrots, gave tulings, gave all the things. All we just need to do is call him again and say we've run out. So you can see God's provision coming even through this. Many people 
who have seen us on the high street doing evangelism. We've had many people call us. Oh, I used to see you on the high street uh, singing and all of that. Pastor, I need prayer. Pastor, I need this. Pastor, I need that. And God has been helping us to reach even those people. Some of them, I've never seen them before. But they said they've seen me. Like I was advising one of our pastors, you know, after this pandemic, go all out and do what God asks you to do. Because at lockdown like this, it gives you opportunity to review yourself. For some of us, we have not been doing anything. Mm. This pandemic has just revealed it. Mm. So God be the glory in the last three, four months now, or three, let's just say three months. Well, anyway, in the last three, four weeks, to God be the glory, more than seven people have given their life to Jesus on the phone with us. I'm praying that by the time we finish, uh, the lockdown is over, all these people will come to the church. All these people will be able to see them. One of them is already telling me, I want to be baptized. Some of them are asking for Bible. We will go, give them Bible. We've given them Bible, pray with them. Some of them will call. Pastor, I can't undo what is going on. We'll pray with them. People that normally, they will not even... You know, there was, uh, this is a testimony. There was a, a man that usually argue with me. There's no God, there's no God. During this pandemic, out of the blue, he called me and said, Pastor, pray for me. I didn't argue with him at all. I just, I said, what do you want me to pray for? And I prayed with him. What a joy. Somebody normally that will not, he will just dismiss you. Another thing that we, we, we've been able to do during this, from the day of the lockdown up till today, we gather to pray every day, Monday to Friday. Every day. When there was no pandemic, if you call people to pray, how many people come to prayer meeting? Sometimes we get 40 people joining the Zoom, uh, Zoom call. We started with ordinary telephone, and then we upgraded to Zoom, where we can see each other. Many people who are not even members of our church, they join. Some reverend, some retired reverend also join us. Some still serving, they join us to pray Monday to Friday. Somebody was asking me last week, Pastor, after this pandemic, please, let's continue this prayer. I look forward to it. And that gives me joy. It gives me joy that people are seeking. This pandemic has brought us to our knees to know the exact thing that we needed. Before the pandemic, we only have two major services. Monday, and where is the Bible study? And then once in a while. But since this thing, Monday to Friday, sometimes we add Saturdays to it. And many more people, it gave them the opportunity to join. People that will normally not go to church, they will join. Some will not show their face. Some will show their face. They were getting more. So after this pandemic, the major challenge for us is we cannot afford to stop what we have started. For example, Zoom or the technology of Zoom, being able to you know, meet, you know, has come to stay. I was discussing with the leadership. We need to find a way to integrate it into our services. Before now, I love technology, but because I, I didn't have somebody who will take ownership of it and do it for me. I can't be on the pulpit and at the same time doing it myself. I needed somebody. So I was telling the leadership, I said, now we need to get somebody. We must integrate Zoom. We must integrate uh, Facebook Live. We must integrate uh, maybe YouTube. We must, so that people who 
are now used to joining can continue even after the pandemic. Yes, yes. Secondly, our Bible study, the maximum we get on a Bible study, maybe 15, 16. The, since the pandemic started, we've, we've been getting an average of between 30 and 40 people attending our Bible study. Wow. The prayer that we do every night, we've been getting an average of between 30 and 50 people every night. Come for a prayer meeting. People will have to work. People will have to do this. Oh, I, I can't, I'm tired. Uh, so we need to encourage that. And I'm praying that the Lord will help us so that we can, you know, the momentum that God has given us the opportunity to start, that momentum will continue. And then, lastly, the pandemic brought out the real us. I got from one of my neighbors came to me the other day. She brought chocolate and a card and said, in the card, she wrote, Joseph, you don't have to do what you are doing, but you are doing it. I see the love of Christ you preach. She wrote it in a card and she gave us a box of chocolate. She said, You and Fola, you, I want to say thank you. Some of the preaching we've been preaching, this pandemic gave us the opportunity to really show it. We talk about God's love. But this gave us the opportunity. You know, in the Western world, it's very difficult to just say you want to give somebody something. They won't even take it from you. But this pandemic brought us that opportunity to relate with people. One of my neighbors, when anytime I try to greet her, she will turn away. During this pandemic, we have become friends. Mm. Mm. And this is an opportunity for us to enlarge, to enlarge our coast, to hone in the doors of opportunity that God has opened for us. We should not go back and see and say, oh, now pandemic is over. Let's go back to normal thing. No. This is the opportunity for us to evangelize. You know, different ways of evangelism has evolved now. We need to hone on it and see life is not going to be as it has been. It's an opportunity. If you remember, every time there is a shift, there was a time before oil, it was the industrial age, before we had the oil. You know, when there's a shift, the momentum is there. It's now for you to hone on it and make use of it. So there is good in evil and there is evil in good. In this pandemic, there is good in it. And I pray that the Lord himself will help us so that the cause that has been enlarged will be fed properly in Jesus' name. Amen. I, I just want to I just want to thank you so much for coming. You know, we are out of time, but at the same time, I just want I I would I will, I will round it up like this. You know, for those that are still waiting, still thinking what is pandemic is what, what are we about? You don't need to think about pandemic right now. You need to start thinking about yourself. What you need to make out of pandemic because pandemic has come and it will soon go. But what will be your own word or what will be your take out out of pandemic if this is our new normal as everybody says this is our new normal this is our new life right now that we have to embrace it you don't you know you know we we, we believe things will soon change but bible says when there is a casting down hmm. you hmm. and i will say there is a lifting up yeah. you will be part of the people that will be blessed through this pandemic you will be there are there are people that are making money even during this pandemic like that like, like right now even though that people are saying, some people lost their job but some are making tons of money during this pandemic you can be one of them too as well there are people that are just that have just discovered new innovation right now during this pandemic you can be one of them 
Don't just sleep all the all day. Don't just take the whole thing. Don't let fear grip your heart. Don't let don't live in fear. Live in faith. When you turn it, when you turn your fear to faith, you begin to see it. You will be able to see what is in it for you. And when you see it, you will be it. When you see it, you have the mind to be it. And when whatever you be it, then you are capable of achieving it. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I believe there is somebody out there that this word has blessed. And I want to thank, thank Pastor Joseph Ibuko, you know, Adele Bigbe for coming all the way, all the way from Scotland. If it's not because <laughs> of this time like this, a new normal, we won't be talking, talking like this, mm. you know? But I believe his word has blessed you. His testimonies has blessed you. Go and fulfill. Discover who you are. Discover what God has for you. Go before God and ask God and ask God, what do you have me do this time? If you ask God, you will know. And another thing, you just remember, what are you good at? Find what you are good at and start working on it. Don't let fear of failure take you away from, the, from, from what you're supposed to achieve. I believe God will bless you because this is the place you get updated. You place you get updated. And I, I, and I just want to thank you so much, sir. For Thank you so much for having us. But I know, I know you're going to come back. You're going to come back again. You're going to come back again because there are more questions that I want. I will have asked you, but we will talk about that one after now. But I just want to say thank you so much, guys, for watching. And I just want to, you know, invite you again when next our next episode come, uh, comes up. And I can tell you another episode is coming up shortly, even after now. But stay right, stay, stay tuned, and get. You, you know, uh, 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 remain focused, remain updated. Thank you so much, Pastor Ibuku, for coming. And Thank you. God bless family. you. God bless you. Thank you. And say Thank hi you. to your family for me. I will. And you.